hello guys welcome back to my channel the great phone repairs if you are new here please subscribe to my channel hit on the notification button to get notified and I upload a new video today I'm going to be showing you the internal component parts on mobile phones and their locations so stay tuned to understand the working principle of most of the components on the mobile phone so the first part we are going to be talking about is the charging port. The charging port is the part on the mobile phone that gives pathway for current to enter into the phone from the charger. So this is the charging port, how it looks like when not attached to the motherboard. So the required voltage to enter into the mobile phone is 5 volts. So this is the charging port configuration. It has 5 legs. 5 pin the first and last pin is for charging and the, the number one written there is the positive leg that is the vcc or vdc or v bus or v chi you can call it anything provided the v there means positive so it required five volts to enter into the phone from the v bus you understand so the, the first is the v bus and the last is the negative that is gnd you can call it ground so the last is the negative and we ha also have the d minus d plus h n g r the d minus is for data and the d plus is also for data you understand when connecting it to the system to the computer system that is what enable it to connect to the from the phone to the system the D minus and the D plus without it your phone can connect to your system and the HND HNGR is the mode detected so the next part we are going to be talking about is the phone microphone you can also call it the mouthpiece so what it does is the is an intercept that the voice is being transmitted into the phone it collects voice from the surrounding to the phone or to the other users so it appears in different form this is a normal mouthpiece so it help the other user when making call to hear what you're trying to say it serves as a voice recorder it collects voice so this is the digital mouthpiece so this is a digital microphone it can also be called an smd microphone it is being mounted to the mobile pcb directly it is being sold out there directly so this is how the digital mouthpiece looks like it's an advanced mouthpiece it does the same work with the first one it helps for recording collecting voice from the surrounding from the user to the other user the next part is the moto that is the vibrator it's also known as moto so what it does it helps in vibration all the vibration that takes place in your mobile phone is being done by this device and it comes in different form these are other different types of motor vibrator on the mobile phone it is being controlled by the power ic and the logic ic it is mostly located at the down part of the mobile phone the the down board that is the sub board the next part is the mini speaker you can call it an earpiece so it's always located at the top side of the mobile phone it helps in bringing out sound from the mobile phone is a mini speaker but it's tiny it's different from the main speaker what it does when making calls it brings out the voice of the other user for you to listen that is what the earpiece does this part we are going to be talking about is the speaker the main speaker this one is quite different from the mini speaker because this one is bigger than the mini speaker and it produces more sound this one you can use it when playing music is it, it enables sound from the phone to come out and it appears in different form it's a different form of speakers from the phone it brings out the voice of music playing from the phone this is what is played so the next part we are going to be talking about is the LCD also called screen so it's the part on the mobile phone that display images in terms of color 
in the phone so this is how the screen looks like this is a complete screen so the screen is divided into three parts we have the mobile phone screen is divided into three parts we have the outer screen and the inner screen that is the lcd and we also have the touchpad or glass so most phones comes with glass like current phones comes with glass and some of some other phones comes with touchpad so the touchpad now is a sensor this is how a touchpad looks like is a sensor that is sensitive to pressure which a user can interact with the mobile application on the phone by touching the pictures or words on the phone that is why sometimes when the touchpad cracks it makes it difficult for the user to interact firmly with the graphics on the phone by touching it when you touch it it will not respond so that is the work of the touchpad the sensor so the next one we'll be talking about the glass the glass it can be found in some phones most phones today you find glass instead of touchpad so the glass is is like a protective features on the phone on the mobile phone screen that helps to prevent the main lcd from cracking so that is the work of the glass as you can see this is how a glass looks like that is the pictorial aspect of the glass and we also have the main lcd that is the display on the phone that brings out the graphics that is the main display that is what we call the lcd so some other phones like the button phones comes with only lcd as you can see these are the pictorial aspect of button phone lcd different types we have 17 leg 16 leg that 7 leg and so on so that is how the mobile phone button phone those keypad phone comes like they only come with lcd so next we have the fingerprint sensor so the fingerprint sensor is a hardware part on the mobile phone that can quickly read a person's unique pattern of ridges on their fingertip to verify the person's identity. So this is how the fingerprint looks like. It helps to detect the user whenever the user is with the phone. So it can serve as a means of locking the phone with security. So most documents are being encrypted using fingerprints. So this is how a fingerprint looks like on the mobile phone. So this is a pictorial aspect. These ones are for iPhones. So this is what the fingerprint does. Next, we're talking about the proximity sensor. So the proximity sensor can be located at the top side of the mobile phone. This is how the top side close to the camera. So the work of the proximity sensor it detects when a user is holding the phone near to their face during a call and turns off the display to prevent keypad press and battery consumption from the display when making call. So that is what the work of the proximity sensor. It's like sometimes you will notice when you are making call, immediately you bring the phone close to your skin, the light goes off, it dims. So that is what the proximity sensor there does. It helps to dim the light of the display, the LCD, whenever you are making call, in order to prevent the touchpad from pressing itself when it contacts with the skin and to, and to also prolong the battery. So next is the power flex. This is how the power flex looks like. The power flex enables us to switch on the mobile phone so it comprises of the power key the volume up and volume down so it's always located at the side of the mobile phone so when that power flex is faulty the user cannot switch on the mobile phone so next we have the sub board that is the down board or you can also call it the down flex so this down board now comprises of the charging port, the mouthpiece, the network antenna and so on. The vibrator is also attached to the downboard. 
So it moves from when the downboard is faulty or some component like the mouthpiece or the vibrator is faulty on the downboard, it is advisable to just change it complete. So this is how the downboard looks like. It have the provision for where mouthpiece is being sold at and network. So next we'll be talking about the network antenna. This is a network antenna. So it enables network to flow freely on the mobile phone. So and it's connected to the from the main board, the main PCB board to the down board that is the sub board. So without its network signal won't be strong on the mobile phone. So next we have the sub board flex. This is the flex that connects the main motherboard to the down board. So the battery, this is an inbuilt battery. So battery is another main important part on the mobile phone. So every battery comes with different reading. The ampere that is for the current. Current is measured in ampere and the volts. So most the required voltage is always 3.5 or 3.7. But the current differs. The current might be rating 1,005 milliampere or 3,005 milliampere, 5,000 milliampere, and so on. So without the battery, it distributes DC current to the mobile phone. Without the battery, the mobile phone won't come on. So it's one of the important parts. So this is how an inbuilt battery looks like. So this is a resistor. So in all mobile phones, you must find a resistor. This is a resistor. So the work of the resistor is an electronic component that opposes the flow of current. It causes voltage drop. So this is it limits the amount of current of voltage that is going to an, to another component or entering into the mobile phone. So that is the work of the resistor. And the resistor comes with different color code. We have 10 kilo ohms, 100 kilo ohms, 7.2 kilo ohms, 8.2. Next, my next video I will be teaching you what is resistor color code and why are they found on resistor. So the resistor, this is an SMD resistor that is a surface mounted resistor. So in other electronic components like TV, radio, we find we find a normal type of resistor. So this is how a normal type of resistor looks like. But in mobile phone they make it smaller for it to not consume more space. So that is why we have SMD resistor so this is an SMD surface mounted resistor next we'll be talking about the SMD capacitor so surface mounted capacitor so this is how a capacitor looks like on a mobile phone so the works of the capacitor is it help in filtering current and removing ripples and also store charges so that is the work of the capacitor and it comes in different form we have the network capacitor the mica capacitor, the ceramic capacitor, and capacitor and capacitor come in different types. Some are polarized and some are non-polarized in the sense that some have positive and negative side and some doesn't have positive and negative side. The network capacitor is used for filtering frequency, tuning and impedance matching. So that is what the network capacitor does. And capacitor comes in different form. Some are pale yellow, some are black. I understand. So next we'll be talking about the diode. Diode. This is an SMD diode. So diode is another component on the mobile phone. It's always located at the motherboard or the downboard. So the work of the diode is used for rectification of electric current, and it can also serve as switching. So it allows current to flow in one direction. So next we have the SMD transistor. So the work of the transistor it helps in reducing current consumption on mobile phone. So transistors on mobile phone are also called RET, R O E T. So they are called resistance equipped transistor. So resistor transistor can be used for switching amplification and regulating of voltage so this is a pictorial picture of a transistor so 
for next we'll be talking about the coin so what is a coin so a coin helps to maintain and stabilize the flow of current on mobile phone and also resist the flow of current on mobile phone that is what a coin does it can also be called an inductor so it's always found in the main pcb board maybe close to the power ic or close to the screen clip so that is where can, the coil is always located so next we'll be talking about the ic so the full meaning of ic is integrated circuits so the work of the ic the ic is also called microchip usually black in nature it is a semiconductor on which thousands of mil or millions of tiny resistor capacitor diode transistors are fabricated so diode capacitor resistor thousands of them or millions of them are being fabricated in its in an ic so an ic functions as an amplifier oscillator tuner counter logic gate memory microcontroller microprocessor so that is what the ic does so the ic serves as a powerhouse so we have different types of ic and each of these ic have a programmed word on it that serves for different purposes so we have the flash ic this is how a flash ic looks like we have the network ic that controls the network this is how it looks like we also have different types of ic power ic understand this is for charging this is a charging ic it controls everything about charging we have the ram it stores temporary information that is it and we have the cpu the cpu ic con so the cpu ic is like a main brain on the mobile phone so without it the phone won't function and when it faulty the phone can't come on so it's always written media tech at the body but next let me show you a pictorial aspect on how most of these parts and components looks like on the motherboard so this is the charging port this is the earpiece the external earpiece port so all these black things are the ic so here is the diode that is a diode and this is a capacitor this is a capacitor these are capacitors so here is the network antenna clip this is the vibrator this is the network antenna connected to the downboard so these these are speakers different types of speakers that comes in different forms so these are speakers this is the mini speaker i'm telling you about the earpiece so this is the mouthpiece the mouthpiece and these are charging ports so guys if this video was helpful if you have learned a new thing please share subscribe hit on the notification button to get notified anytime i upload a new video my name is great and this my channel name is the grateful press so please subscribe till next time i'll be uploading a new video